In this video, we're going to practice interval sizes, and you're looking at three intervals that I've already drawn on my paper. So the first step is always to name the notes. You literally can't do this if you don't know what the letters are. So we're going to name all of these notes, and then we're going to calculate the interval sizes. So the first one is a line note moving to another line note. So we're going to use every good boy does fine. Every good boy, so here's G, and every good boy B. The next interval starts with a space note, so we need the word face, F-A-C-E. And back to lines, we have every good boy does fine, so this is G. And then finally we have a note that's directly below the bottom line, so if this bottom line is E, this is D. I'm going to write these beside the notes. And every good boy again, so we have a B. So now we let's just talk about what we're looking at. This interval is written side to side. The notes are one after the other, uh, and it's ascending. So it's pretty straightforward to see that we want to start with the low note. Uh, if we jump over here to the end, this one is written up and down vertically, so it's still pretty easy to see that we want to start with the low note. Now this interval appears to be descending, and you might be tempted to start with the E when you calculate your interval, but if you do that, you're going to have to count backwards to get the right answer. So we'll explore that when we get there. So. We're going to count G to B and count everything that's in between them in the musical alphabet. Now, the easiest way that I have found to do this is to do it with your fingers. So I'm going to put my thumb in the picture and I'm going to say my thumb is G and so I count A, B, three fingers. So we call this interval a third. Now, I want you to notice that the next interval, which is descending, you can tell by looking at it that these two notes are farther apart. Look how close this third is. It's just line to line. So this is clearly a bigger interval. Now, here's the, here's the thing that you must remember. If you want to count the first note to the second note instead of the lowest to the highest, you have to count backwards in the alphabet because if you do not, you will get the wrong answer. So for example, if you have named these as E and G and you hold your thumb up and you say E, F, G, you get another third. But we've already determined that these notes are farther apart than a third. So if your interval is descending, you have to remember that the easiest way to do this is to always start with the low note. I will be repeating that constantly. Always start with the low note, that's G. So here again, we're going to start with G. That's your thumb. Hold this. Hold your thumb up and do this with me. We're going to count from G, that's one, A, B, C, D, E. Now you probably held up six fingers when you did that. It's more than just one hand. So we would not refer to this as a sixth. And common sense has to become a part of this process. Common sense says it cannot be EFG, it cannot be a third, because a third always looks like this. These are spread too far apart. If you want to do it backwards, you're welcome to, you should get the same answer. E, hold your thumb up, E, D, C, B, A, G, you should still get six fingers. But by far the easier solution is to start low and go high. Now on the last one, it's easy enough to see the low note. We're going to start with D. Hold your thumb up and say D and count to B. D, I'm going to give you time to do it yourself. And now we'll do it together. D, E, F, G, A, B. Six more fingers. Now I'm going to do some more intervals and I'm going to make them bass clef intervals. It doesn't matter. The procedure is still the same. You must name the notes. What I'm going to do different here is I'm going to put some accidentals in. So I'm going to add accidentals and I'm going to put these notes um, 
some distance apart. Okay, here we go. Now the accidentals have absolutely no role in calculating the sizes. So I'm going to name the notes. I'm going to include the accidentals in my names, but then I'm going to disregard the accidentals as I hold my fingers up and count. So as we look at base clef, good burritos don't fall apart. So this is burritos. I'm going to put B flat. Good burritos don't fall, so this one is F. Now we look at the bottom space, all cars eat gas, so this is A flat. And we already know this one, we've seen it once. It's over in the first measure, B flat. Okay, all cars eat gas, G sharp. All cars, C sharp. I've got my names. Now, it is crucial when you spell the notes to include the accidentals, but they do not play a role at all in calculating the sizes. Sizes only deal with the letters of the alphabet. So hold your thumb up and say B. I've got my thumb in the picture there. B, C, D, E, F. I got five fingers, so this is a fifth. This one's really close together. You see how closely spaced these are on the staff? So it's going to be a small number. A, B. That's only two fingers, so this is a second. And now finally, let's go back to review our idea that we start with the low note and count to the high note. Hold your thumb up and say C. And we're going to count to G. So we count the first note, the last note, and everything in between. C, D, E, F, G. We have another fifth. That's how you count interval sizes, always counting from low to high, and always disregarding the accidentals to get the numbers. And let me just remind you that these are always named with ordinal numbers. So it's fifth, not a five. So fifth means um, that is an ordinal number, and that is how we name intervals.